you know you want to do a systematic review and you even know what your research question is. But how do you know what kind or type of systematic review to, co to conduct? I remember when I did my very first systematic review, I tried to force my research question to fit into an effectiveness systematic review while I was actually doing a systematic review of etiology. I wanted to determine which factors are associated with injury in cricket fast bowlers. However, at that time, I was new to systematic reviews and all of it was so overwhelming. I approached my systematic review as if it was a systematic review of effectiveness. You know where you compare two treatments and you see which one wins. Well, actually, the right fit for me was a systematic review of etiology, where one relates factors to a certain outcome. It's a huge difference, and it caused a lot of confusion and frustration. But actually, now that I look back, it seems a bit silly that I struggled so much to get my head around this. Yes, in both cases, the overarching principles are the same. You collect your primary studies and summarize them into one systematic review. But the detail in terms of how you present and analyze your results is different depending on what type of systematic review you choose. Also, at that time, there was very little guidance on how to do a systematic review. While now, we are blessed with a whole lot of smart people who can help us and guide us through this process. A research group led by Zachary Munn wrote a paper titled What kind of systematic review should I conduct? A proposed typology and guidance for systematic reviewers in the medical and health sciences. This is a super valuable article when it comes to figuring out what type of systematic review you need to do according to what you want to achieve. You'll find a link to this valuable paper in the description box below this video. So tell me, when you started working on your very first systematic review, how did you feel? Can you associate with this feeling of total overwhelm? Let me know in the comment box below this video. And also give other viewers and other systematic reviewers some hope by sharing your success story. You know, how did you feel when you got to the other side of the systematic review, alive and thriving? All the different types of systematic reviews are listed and explained in Table 1 of the article. Let's briefly go through them and then I'll leave you to go and read the article. You'll also find some references to more information in the article and you can also find more information in the JBI Manual for Evidence Synthesis. I'll leave a link to this resource in the description box below this video as well. I think the most common type of systematic review is the systematic review of effectiveness, which aims to evaluate the effectiveness of a certain treatment or practice in terms of its impact on outcomes. And an example is, what is the effectiveness of exercise for treating depression in adults compared to no treatment or a comparison treatment? Another type of systematic review is the experiential or qualitative systematic review, which aims to investigate the experience or meaningfulness of a particular phenomenon. For example, a research question, what is the experience of undergoing high technology medical imaging in adult patients in high income countries? Then there's the systematic review of costs or economic evaluation to determine the costs associated with a particular approach or treatment strategy, particularly in terms of cost effectiveness or benefit. And an example research question, what is the cost effectiveness of self-monitoring of blood glucose in type 2 diabetes mellitus in high income countries? Then there's the prevalence and or incidence systematic review, which determines the prevalence or, and or incidence of a certain condition. For example, what is the prevalence or incidence of claustrophobia and claustrophobia reactions in adult patients undergoing MRI? The Diagnostic Test Accuracy Systematic Review aims to determine how well a diagnostic test works in terms of its sensitivity and specificity for a particular diagnosis with an example research question of 
what is the diagnostic test accuracy of nutritional tools compared to the patient-generated subject of global assessment amongst patients with colorectal cancer to identify undernutrition? The systematic review of etiology and or risk determines the association between a particular exposure or risk factors and outcomes. For example, are adults exposed to radon at risk of developing lung cancer? Another type of systematic review is the systematic review of expert opinion or policy. And this type of systematic review um, review and synthesize current expert opinion, text or policy on a certain phenomena. What are the policy strategies to reduce maternal mortality in pregnant or birthing women in Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia and Sri Lanka? The psychometric systematic review aims to evaluate the psychometric properties of a certain test, normally to determine the reliability and validity of a particular test or assessment. For example, what is the reliability, validity, responsiveness and interpretability of methods such as manual muscle testing, isokinetic dynamometry, handheld dynamometry to assess muscle strength in adults? Another type of systematic review is the prognostic systematic review. And the prognostic systematic review determines the overall prognosis for a condition, the link between specific prognostic factors and an outcome and or prognostic or prediction models and the prognostic tests. In adults with low back pain, what is the association between individual recovery expectations and disability outcomes? And lastly, the methodology systematic review aims to examine and investigate current research methods and potentially their impact on research quality. For example, what is the effect of masked or blind peer review for quantitative studies in terms of study quality as reported in published reports? You will realize that in this video, I only addressed the different types of systematic reviews and I haven't touched upon scoping reviews. In another video, I'll explain the difference between a scoping review and a systematic review. Here are the list of the various systematic reviews, just to summarize what we just went through. Now that you know the various types of systematic reviews out there, what's the next step? Here's my suggestions. Download the paper of Mun et al. and save it in a safe place. Then, Bookmark the JBI Manual for Evidence Synthesis. Then, decide which type of systematic review suits your research question best and download a few published examples of this type of systematic review. A good place to get examples from is the journal JBI Evidence Synthesis. You'll be able to download their protocols for free, which is already of great help. And then, Google Scholar or any of your other databases may be able to assist with examples of full systematic reviews. Also read the relevant chapter in the JBI Manual for Evidence Synthesis. And then it's time to get going. Enjoy this exciting journey. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.